onwards and upwards. This will be the second uh, support video, part two, about CNC essay writing for two short stories. So we are ready to move into the writing process. So just a quick review, there are three core components that each introduction paragraph needs. So this video is focused on writing your introduction paragraph. So as you'll note, we want a hook sentence. The purpose of the hook sentence is to introduce your topic, but to do so in kind of an interesting or intriguing way that should capture the audience's attention. Uh, after that, we'll usually include two to four what I call framing sentences. They're sometimes also called background sentences. So they provide a little bit more information about the stories that we're working with or if we're writing about Obasan, for example, about the novel itself or about the author or about the setting or the time frame in which the story takes place. So that kind of helps us to frame uh, the situation to, to set up the readers of the essay for success in understanding what we're trying to accomplish. Then we move into the most important sentence of your essay, which is our thesis statement. And as you know, a thesis statement is comprised of two parts, the thesis punch and the guiding list. And it should be one sentence for the purpose of this essay. Okay, so I've already written my introduction, um, and we'll just take a look at it partially. That's to speed things up for making the videos nice and short, but also uh, you guys gave me the feedback that my typing is quite uh, loud, shotgun-esque, you might say. So I've done the writing in advance, and, and we can take a look at each of the components and, and talk about them a little bit. So obviously, we're going to start with our hook sentence. So let's take a look at what I came up with. So here is our... Where does the hook end? Right here. Okay, perfect. Wonderful. Okay, so let's let's see. We've got a prospective title, so we oh, you always want to try to also come up with an interesting title uh, for your for your essay. So I've I've used unraveling the heart of two nature driven short stories. Then another thing it's important to note is you always want to press the tab key to indent your paragraph. Some of you have been getting a, a slight deduction for not correctly indenting. Easy to do. Just use the tab key. So let's take a look at the hook sentence. The power of the grizzly balanced the ferocity of the tiger. But these two amazing predators are presented from opposing angles in Finlayson's two shorts, The Legends of Old, The Legend of Old Mossy, and A Real Live Tiger Hunt. So this is a fairly strong uh, hook sentence. We can see that it introduces the the some of the similarities, but also points out the fact that there are differences. It includes the author's name, and it also has the story titles themselves. So a few things to note here is that we don't give away too much. Um, we do we do kind of uh, show the reader, hey, we're going to be talking about uh, stories that are focused on these animal characters, or at least there's animal characters within the stories. Um, but there's also this idea that there's opposing angles used in how they're presented. We've included the author's name and we've included the story's uh, titles themselves. So we've got all the parts that we would expect to see in a hook sentence. Now, I want to talk just for a second about what I call my write it forward strategy. Um, what I notice with some writers, with some students as they're writing essays is they can get caught up on analyzing the quality of each sentence right after they've finished composing it. And I don't really recommend that as a powerful strategy for getting your first draft done. The first draft is all about getting your ideas down on the page. So I use what I call this write it forward strategy. That means once you finish the sentence, move straight on to the next bit because you can always come back and improve the sentence or change it all together when we move into the editing phase of the writing process. So remember, after your first draft is done, we usually give ourselves a day or two, maybe even three, of what I call soak time. That's time for you to not think about the, the writing you've done directly. Then we come back to it and we move into what we call the editing and revisions phase. So by giving yourself that soak time, you should look at it with a new set of eyes and you kind of put on a new hat. You put on your editor's hat. Um, so this is why I encourage students to write it forward. Get everything down. You're going to come back and look at it again every uh, anyways as long as you've given yourself enough time. Okay, so the hook sentence is completed. Now we're going to move into those framing or background sentences. We use two to four sentences here to give a little bit more description that surrounds the project that we're working on. So we've got a nice section here. So we'll take a look at it. 
this highlight section is our uh, framing sentences. So as short stories go, comma, that's uh, PLMP by the way, these tales both place the main characters into nature settings and challenge them to cope with dangerous situations. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. Semicolon, however, comma, there are also stark differences in how the writer does this. So I've, now I've again, I've highlighted that, hey, there are some similarity points here and some difference points here. Um, it's important to note that you don't want to give away your best ideas in the framing sentence. So you're probably going to talk about something you notice that is like parallel to your topic, but you're not going to give your gold yet. You're not going to be throwing out your diamonds and emeralds and rubies. Keep those back for your main body paragraphs. Okay, and what his overall purpose is with these stories. So we've kind of hinted that there's similarity and differences. Now we're going to move into this next framing sentence. Careful reading and analysis of these two tales will illuminate a density of literary devices. So this is also a good sentence because it tells our readers we're going to be looking at these stories with a literary lens. In fact, we're going to have several different layers or levels of lenses. Okay, let's go up here. So we have completed the framing sentences. Okay, now lastly, we're going to move into the thesis statement. So just a reminder, your thesis statement is comprised of two parts, the thesis punch and the guiding list. The punch talks about your purpose, kind of what you're hoping to accomplish with your, with your essay, with your argument, with your position. And then we add the guiding list to give a little bit of extra information to the reader about what each section will be focusing on. So that's kind of a list of the topics for your main body paragraphs. Okay, so let's take a look at how this turned out. Thus, a comparison and contrast framework can be powerfully employed to investigate, now we're moving into our list, character development, use of similes and metaphors, and unravel core themes that the author is striking at with his two nature-focused tales. Okay, so we're fairly happy with those uh, sections. We've successfully completed um, each of our components. So I don't, I don't think it's a bad idea to kind of have this little checklist at the top when you're doing your introduction uh, paragraph writing, because then you can say to yourself, ah, check, I've finished that, check, I've finished that, check, I've finished that. And so we, as we can see again, this is our first draft. We're not married and buried here. We can definitely change things while we, when we move into our editing phase, but we wrote it forward. We just kind of kept pushing on and we've completed uh, what we were expected to do. Now, finally, remember, we're hoping that the length is between 110 and 130 words for this assignment. So we can always just kind of dub double check to see where we ended up. Ah, oh, 130, boom. So we're exactly in that sweet spot where we wanted to be. Now, if you were a little bit above or even a little bit below, that should be fine with your first draft because you can tweak things, you can add or change things um, as we move into the completion of our project. Okay, so hopefully uh, this example video will guide you in what you're expected to do. So hopefully by Monday, you'll have a draft of your introduction paragraph ready to go.